I've got a maintenance story here relating to my rear shock absorber that I'm going to explain in this video using this motorcycle Kawasaki Ninja ZX6R 2013 to 2018 so far but the maintenance item itself relates to all other makes and models of motorcycles whose shock absorber mounts the same way as mine that is with a linkage let me show you what that means in plain English a shock absorber has two mounting points one upper through a bracket in this case this is how the upper mounting point looks like this bracket is mounted or bolted to the frame the shock absorber has a red spring and it's over there on the ground so it extends vertically down here with its red spring going this way through this hole here in the swing arm this is the swing arm that's the spring swing arm pivot point there and shock absorber has a lower mounting point which looks like this so that's the upper mounting point and that's the lower mounting point and it doesn't mount to just one point on the motorcycle it mounts to two points let me show you where one mounting point is here on the swing arm so this is the swing arm and it moves up and down as the rear wheel goes up and down and Please ignore this atrocious rusty chain. So this is the one of the mounting points on the swing arm. But there is a second one. The second mounting point is right here. This bracket here, part of the frame. This part of the frame is the extension of this vertical or near vertical spur. That comes down here. And this is where the gear shifter is. I've removed this lower body fairing here this is the kickstand so underneath pretty much everything that's the engine's sump here with oil in it this is the one of the lower mounting points and this is the other and the shock absorber this is the upper one upper mounting point here and it comes down pretty much vertically here and ends here and mounts both there and there so how is it mounted to two places when it has one hole at the bottom it mounts through a linkage let me put you on the tripod here and I'll show you what this linkage thing is on different makes and models this linkage may look visually different it can be in different orientations but on this motorcycle I'll show you it's this way so this part of the linkage fits here and with this bolt it's mounted there I hope that makes sense and this bolt at the front here mounts to the middle of the frame and this bolt here ties back with this tie rod this is called tie rod it mounts back to the swing arm there and then mounts with this bolt there so this is the two mounting points this one's in the swing arm and this one's on the frame this is how it's mounted and how it works in operation is that when uh, the shock absorber extends down such as I go into a porthole and the wheel drops down this extends and this linkage does this extends down so in normal operation it moves up and down a little bit uh, with the surface uh, uh, imperfections and in a porthole it goes down like so in a if I hit a speed bump the spring shortens it moves up like so okay that makes sense I hope so speed bump pothole speed bump speed bump pothole okay and normally just moves a little bit up and down it does not ever make a 360 for any reason now what I noticed in terms of maintenance is about the bolts and the sleeves in this linkage this linkage is a piece of piece of cast aluminum really strong and and besides these three bolts I'm just taking this one off there are some there are three sleeves in it this is one of the sleeves so the bolt goes through the sleeve and the sleeve runs on the needle bearing there there is this black gasket in front of the needle bearing and that's how this works for all three pivot points now what I noticed was when I took this apart no before I took this apart 
Now, this is what necessitated my curiosity and taking this apart, is that I noticed that the bolt, especially this one, closest to the rear wheel, because the rear wheel is here, this is the swing arm here, so the rear wheel rotates here. I noticed that the, especially this one, closest to the rear wheel, is very wobbly, has too much of play. You can see it's loose in the sleeve. The sleeve is solid. The sleeve is not moving about. If you try to do the same to the sleeve, the sleeve is sitting very firmly, but the bolt in it has considerable amount of play. I went ahead and measured the diameter of the bolt and measured the inner diameter of the sleeve. And this is what I found. This play here, or clearance, is 0.35 millimeters. Uh, the clearance on the next bolt, let me just put this nut back on, the clearance on this bolt is about 0.18 millimeters, so less, but it also has it also has some clearance there and the clearance on this bolt is 0.15 millimeters so I thought this makes perfect sense closest to the rear wheel gets a lot of wash from the wheel since I commute every day or using a motorcycle all year round and that means eight months of rain and four months of dry or so in the Pacific Northwest at sea level so this one has the greatest amount of clearance because this wore the greatest amount. Probably due to surface corrosion, I speculated. Look at the surface of the bolt as it's cleaned up. I thought I lost so much metal that it causes this 0.35 millimeter clearance between the inner diameter of the sleeve and the outer diameter of the bolt. I went ahead and ordered some parts for this thing and asked the dealer what is the maintenance schedule on the linkage. They had nothing. Now I don't know about your particular make and model of motorcycle, whether it, it could anything from Aprilia's and Ducatis to Harley's if they mount the shock the same way, MV Agosta, whatever, anything from the post-communist bloc countries. Uh, as well as Honda, Suzuki's, Yamaha's, help me out here. On your particular make and model, do you have anything that the manufacturer says about maintenance interval of these, replacing these bolts ever or maintaining bolts due to exposure to weather? In, uh, in this particular model of motorcycle, I found nothing. Kawasaki has nothing about these and they are clearly wobbly. Now, wobbly bolts on the shock are not a major safety concern because they do not contribute to rear wheel instability. The rear wheel needs to be really solid and stable and that has to do with the bolt diameter that goes through the, the axle. Uh, the spacers, inside diameters on the spacers, the bearing, condition of the bearing, so that, that's rear wheel geometry and swing arm pivot point here. The sleeves, the needle bearings and everything here, so the swing arm needs to be solid sideways so your motorcycle is cornering solid when it's leaned over and doesn't buckle with additional looseness here or here. But looseness in this, especially 0.35 millimeter clearance here on the shock absorbers, elongation or shortening is not a safety issue. It's really not interfering with much anything. Uh, doesn't help with track speeds or cornering or or acceleration or deceleration. It doesn't affect much anything. It was just annoying, especially that it made a sound when when I, and the motorcycle is propped up with that fence post component here, I'm gonna pull the motorcycle to me at this upper, the passenger foot bracket here, just to lift the rear wheel off the ground, just like, just like so. So when I did this, and you can hear the gas sloshing, when I did this, the loose bolt made a loud clunky sound 
that's vibrated through the swing arm and the frame when the shock got extended and unloaded and loaded, unloaded and loaded. So, I, so the dealer had nothing in their database, whatever could relate to the maintenance intervals of these or replacement of these or cleaning of these or anything. So I went ahead and cleaned it, that was given, and then took my measurements. And in the meanwhile, I ordered new bolts and sleeves. The bolts and sleeves have arrived, in, and they, I put them back in the original packaging. And I'm not going to put them in, because what I found with the new bolts and sleeves is that they are exactly the same size as these ones. Now, granted, my measurements were taken with only a digital caliper, but close enough is close enough. If they are microscopically not different, they still have a clearance of 0.35 millimeter on the small guy here. Here, let me let me show you on this one. This is where the clearance was the greatest. This is brand new out of the package. And if you look at it and listen, it's obvious that it has the same. This is how 0.35 millimeters of clearance looks like. So, I'm not going to install these. I just keep them just in case something catastrophically fails. On my cell phone here, sorry about this iPhone 4S, I have my measurements here, rear shock mounting. And uh, I also noticed with the caliper that bolts are slightly out of round because I can rotate them between the jaws and look at the digital caliper's numbers. And, and, the, the, and they are tapering and bolts are slightly wider at the head. This is due to the manufacturing of bolts. They are they are cold headed. They're cold forged out of a solid rod. They are like Play-Doh deformed when they are you know using tons of hydraulic pressure. The head is formed in uh, three or four steps. Cold forged head. So that makes the neck here on the bolt bulging out a little bit, and because the sleeve's length is such, so that makes them a little wider here, close to the head, and because the thread is formed here, that makes them a little narrower here, close to the threaded section, because the threads are rolled. That means, just like Play Doh, the threads are deformed by rolling them through a series of dies that have horizontal grooves in them as the, as the bolt is rolled forward due to tons of tons tens of tons of hydraulic pressure over a length of i don't know half a meter 2 feet or so these threads are rolled and they're getting gradually deeper and deeper and deeper and then the threaded bolt is spit out at the end that's why you can see some deformation, fluid deformation at the end of the bolts. All bolts are threaded this way. Okay, except the ones that are done on a lathe. You can see that they are longer at the edge than at the middle because some of the metal is displaced like so. And that makes them narrower here. So cold rolling makes them narrower here. Cold heading makes them wider here. That's why they are tapering. And that's exactly how the new bolts look like with the same clearances. There's no point in putting in the new bolts. The old bolts are somewhat stained and the old sleeves are somewhat stained. You can see here the needle bearings have minimal amount of wear on them. I did not measure this with a micrometer would be a, a more appropriate tool but I'm not feeling it with my fingers and I think it's not measurable with a micrometer either. So I have five bolts to put back, three here, a fourth one mounts to the swing arm and the fifth one up here to the, to the uh, upper mounting point. I've got all my wrenches and torque wrenches for the small guy 14 millimeter wrench for this one 17 millimeter wrench and in terms of torque specifications i just have two pages here printed from the actual manual that relates to this make and model so that's what you see the frames spar and uh, the upper mounting point is there there and uh, that's bolt number five bolt number six is going through there on the underside of the frame which is there but it's barely visible not that one underneath there and underneath there that's the mounting point so there's bolt six bolt seven is further down 
here that's bolt 7 and that's bolt 8 the nut is mounted the, the nut is numbered here on bolt 8 and on the second page I have my torque specs this is what we're looking at also out of the service manual bolts 5, 6, 7 and 8 those are newton meters and foot pounds so that's my maintenance story let me know how your motorcycle uh, works out in terms of maintenance on the linkage okay do you have any specs what make and model do you have what does the dealer say do you find anything on it not torque specifications but cleaning maintaining lubricating clearances amount of uh, wobble that they have so do let me know i appreciate your input and thank you very much for watching